demonstrate any fact they give up lawful consideration in the purported creation of money commensurable to the falsified debts they claim. But even more importantly then, their failure to do this further comprises a failure to justify that any property of the purported banking system is ever at risk as only might ostensibly justify purported interest. What is so important about this, of course, is that the present ever unjustifiable imposition of interest is itself inherently terminal. Forty-three years ago, my work proved that it is impossible to maintain what I have called a vital circulation subject to interest without inevitably suffering a terminal sum of falsified debt. What do I mean by these terms vital circulation and terminal sum of falsified debt? By vital circulation I mean a circulation which as long as possible can suffice in servicing falsified debts to a purported banking system. Because the present purposed obfuscation of our currency pretends to loan principal into circulation, a circulation or volume of currency can only exist as much as some remaining principal exists in circulation. Out of that circulation, however, we are required to pay not only all the remaining ostensibly owed principal, but all the interest upon that principal as well. We ask stupidly, of course, who would loan us money if it were not subject to interest? But the answer to this question is not to blindly submit to the present terminal obfuscation of our currency only as if we are borrowing money into existence from purported banks. For we are not borrowing existent money at all. In fact, on the contrary, purported banking systems merely publish further evidence or representations of our very own promissory obligations to each other. As we have proven, and as we shall prove further, no purported banking system, however, in fact gives up any lawful consideration at all, ostensibly commensurable to the debts it falsifies to itself. We do not borrow money from banks. Purported banking systems merely publish evidence of our very own promissory obligations to each other. They do not have any lawful consideration even at stake ostensibly to justify interest. Nor in turn does any downstream aspect of the resultant arrangement even justify transmission of principle to the possession of the purported banking system. On the contrary, all payments of principal are only to be retired from circulation. Thus the purposed obfuscation of the currency of which I have taught for 43 years is tremendously important because in fact nothing whatever justifies interest, particularly as the principal is never, never, never the rightful property of the purported banking system.
How do I say this truly? Because the purported banking system gives up no lawful consideration, there is no veritable debt to the purported banking system. Because no property of the purported banking system is at risk, neither does any fact justify interest. Because interest is unjustifiable, no justifiable means even exists for the purported banking system to acquire either the principal or the interest. And because the natural obligation of promissory obligations is instead to retire paid principal, paid principal, in fact, is always defunct. The principal paid in fulfillment of a promissory obligation, therefore, is never the rightful possession of anyone. Paid principal is inherently defunct as a currency then because fulfillment itself means that paid principal no longer represents an obligation to deliver property or value. Paid principal therefore is only rightly retired from circulation. It can never, never, never therefore, not for a moment of its existence, be or represent the rightful property of a purported banking system. This then is the obfuscation. Our obligations to pay and to retire principal from circulation are obfuscated into falsified debts to a purported banking system, further subject to the unwarranted imposition of interest with all the resultant consequences before us culminating in terminal dispossession under a perpetual escalation of falsified indebtedness as we can only maintain a vital circulation by perpetually reborrowing principal and interest back into circulation as an ever greater and inevitably terminal sum of falsified debt. All we have before us, then, is a purposed obfuscation of currency, the only consequence of which is a perpetual and even irreversible escalation of unjustifiable dispossession, which culminates in the present terminal dispossession, which we merely pretend ignorantly to understand as a collapse. Indeed, there is a collapse, but it is an inevitable collapse, and it is not a natural collapse. It is merely a consequence of a purposed obfuscation of our currency, which can, which can only precipitate in terminal failure. We can only explain and understand this inevitably terminal failure by unraveling the present obfuscation of our currency. But so, it is entirely wrong, first, that we are falsely obligated to pay principal out of a general circulation and into the possession of any purported banking system. And secondly, it is wrong that interest is falsely imposed upon falsified debts to a purported banking system. On the contrary, the essential obligation of any promissory obligation is to pay and to retire principal from circulation. All this, therefore, is critical for us to understand because it means there is no justification whatever for interest. In fact, the purported banking systems of the world only pretend to be creditors. The only real creditors give up property for promissory obligations. We are both the real creditors and issuers of promissory obligations. We issue them and we accept them for property we give up in our acceptance of our own promissory obligations. Moreover, in every such arrangement, of course, every real creditor is paid in full from the outset of the arrangement, 
only so long as the integrity of the obligations can be maintained. With this itself, depending entirely upon whether the resultant currency is fully disposable to that purpose. Not only then does the present obfuscation of our promissory obligations disprove its own claim that a real creditor deserves interest, by in fact denying every real creditor interest, the resultant obfuscation makes sustaining the integrity or necessary redeemability of the obfuscated currency impossible by dedicating ever more and even inevitably all of a circulation to servicing falsified debts to the purported banking system, as opposed, of course, to sustaining the industry and commerce which are obligated to do so, and which are denied just reward, therefore, to ever greater extents by the present purposed obfuscation of the currency. How does it do this? It does this by multiplying falsified debt in proportion to a circulation or remaining capacity to pay. Obviously, too, then, this denial of redeemability is a means of dispossession which dispossession is the only consequence and therefore the only reasonable object of the purposed obfuscation. The whole idea of the unwarranted and unassented systems which have been imposed upon us then is to steal from us. A further fault of the method of stealing from us is that it happens to be terminal. Why? In order to persist in servicing falsified debts to a purported banking system, we must maintain what I have called a vital circulation, because we are paying all principal and related interest out of a general circulation and into the possession of the purported banking system, out of a circulation which at any time can be comprised of no more than some remaining principle. Thus in any circulation of this purposed obfuscation of our currency, more is paid out of a circulation than exists in circulation to be paid out of the circulation. This perpetual process of circulatory deflation then, in turn requires perpetual reflation of the deficiency if we are to persist in servicing even the initial obligations of the system, for otherwise the circulation disappears before we, we could fulfill even the initial falsified obligations of the obfuscation. This of course then is a critical matter, because we are paying principal and interest out of a circulation which at most can be comprised of some remaining principle, and because we must continually reborrow this interest and principle back into circulation in the regular cycles of the obfuscation, because it is neither the purpose nor the practice of the purported banking system to cut short its dispossession by purchasing not only our production, but our means of production outright until, of course, it is forced to do so, purportedly to save us from the inevitably terminal conditions the obfuscation itself causes. Nor is it even possible for the purported banking system to do so, because the value of the property is equivalent to the principal, and what it must purchase to resolve all falsified debt and interest related to all finance property, therefore exceeds the value or quantity of related property available to do so. Thus in any practical case of the purposed obfuscation, we do not borrow excessively, merely never understanding the consequences. On the contrary, somewhere in the subject industry and commerce, we, some of us, sense and are affected by the shortage so as to persist